All right, guys, so we're back with a brand new video. I'm going to show you guys how to uh, limit commands to specific uh, users with the correct permissions. Because obviously, if you have administration commands and you don't limit it, everyone's going to be able to use it. And that can be really bad for your server. Because let's say if you have, you know, some ban commands and some kick commands and you don't check the permissions by the user, whoever is invoking that command, that means any user can use those ban and those kick commands and can pretty much get rid of every single user on your server. So you always want to make sure you are limiting your commands to specific users, especially, uh, well, not, well, only for, uh, I guess, moderation and administration commands, okay? Of course, the uh, situation depends on uh, for each command. For example, you can define a set of administration commands that are only available for uh, users that have the administration permission or administrator permission. You can also define maybe more lightweight commands for moderators, but not regular users. So you can check if they have, let's say, both ban and kick uh, permissions. And we're going to do that in this video. So let's go ahead and create a, another command. We're going to call this ban alias. We'll, call, we'll give it a list of ban user, uh, ban. Uh, I think that's it for now. Yeah, that should be fine. No need to overcomplicate things, and we'll just call this ban user command. And it's just going to take in the context parameter, and we're going to take in just one argument for now. And we're just going to simulate a ban. We're not actually going to ban a user, but we're just going to simulate it. So we're going to say await context dot channel. It's going to do the channel property, and we're going to say dot send band. Uh, we're going to say curly braces and then dot format as an arc one to log that or print that to the uh, or I mean I'm sorry not print to send that to the channel. Okay, so let's go ahead and do ban. If I do that, obviously it's going to give us an error because we need to pass in an argument. Ban sty, ban sty. And let's do that on my other account. Notice how that works on my other account. And my other account doesn't have full permissions. Obviously, well, now it doesn't. But if I, obviously, if I do it again, you can see that even without, uh, even my other account has the regular member role, and that role doesn't have any permissions at all. Let's exit this. If you see over here, you're going to see no permissions, right? Just regular permissions like that. But no, you know, no ban or kick or no manage channels, things like that. Okay. And obviously, you know, you want to make sure you limit it. Okay. So if you want to restrict this command to people, to users that only have a specific permission, you're going to have to do at commands has permissions. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, what permissions do we want to check? So if I want to make sure that the user has the kick or not kick, uh, ban members permission, we do ban underscore members uh, equal true. And you can go to the documentation and you can go over to the permissions part. Okay. And you can go ahead and look at all of the properties that, or not all of the parameters you can pass into check. So for example, there's create instant invites, kick members, ban members, administrator, manage channels, etc. In this case, for the ban command, we're going to make sure that they have the ban permission. And if they don't, uh, it's going to throw an error, which is going to be handled by our uh, on command error uh, events. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go ahead and do kick sty. Uh, hold on. None type object has no. Oh, it's, I'm sorry. It's ban. I'm sorry. It's ban. So ban sty, ban sty. Okay, let's try my other account, ban sty, and you're gonna see nothing happens. And it's gonna say, uh, ban was invoked incorrectly because we're missing permissions on our other account. It's gonna say you are missing ban permissions to run this command. Very straightforward. And of course, we can also add a bunch of others as well. So if I go ahead and I do, um, where is it? Uh, let's see, ban members equal true. Let's say they also need to have kick members as well. Right, because obviously, if you give someone ban permissions, you should also give them. I mean, it, it makes sense for them to have kick permissions as well. It doesn't make sense for them to not have kick kick members, but again, that's really up to the server owner on how they want to set permissions. So if I do kick members, let's try to uh, ban sty again. And if I look at my console, it's going to say, "Or well, I invoked the command just now over here." You are missing ban members and kick members permission to run this command. Okay. Now, if I go ahead and if I give, uh, let's just say, I'm gonna go to my bots and I'm gonna give it uh, just ban members permission. So I'm gonna give this guy a uh, bot. And I think, yeah, I need to make sure that this guy doesn't have administration administrator. I don't think it does. 
it doesn't okay so the bot role has the i think it was the has the kick permission but it doesn't have ban so if i do ban sty that works for me okay because i have the permissions but if i do ban sty again on my other account you're missing kick permissions to run this command because yeah i think we set that over here we said yeah we set kick members off but we said ban, ban members on okay and since that role is missing since that user is missing that permission it's not gonna work. So all of these need to be satisfied. Okay, that's pretty much it for that. Okay, and of course, if you wanted to make sure that only admins can access that role, you do administrator equal true. Okay, and remember, administrator permission bypasses everything. So ban sty. If I try to invoke that on my other account, you're gonna see that it says you are missing the administrator permission to run this command, which is, like I said, very, very straightforward really good for uh making sure that you're limiting your commands to uh specific users or specific uh, groups that have a uh permission okay and of course there's also a bunch of other checks that you can do as well if you actually go over to um the documentation and you click on checks you're gonna see there's a whole bunch of things that you can check for okay you, there's a basic default check which is just a predicate and it says it's a decorator that adds a check to the command or its subclasses. These checks could be accessed via command.checks. And they give you a lot of different um they give you a lot of different examples too. Okay, so I highly recommend you take a look at that because it's very, very useful. Uh I think uh let's take a look at a bunch of other let's take let's do a bunch of other checks as well. Let's see. Let's go ahead and check to see if the user has a role. Okay, because sometimes instead of checking for, for permissions, you might also want to check for roles as well. So if they're missing, like let's say the moderator role, that won't work. Okay, so let's go ahead and do has role. Okay, so let's go ahead and do commands dot has a role. And over here, uh, it's gonna take in an item and it says a check that is added that checks if the member invoked the command has the role specified via the name or ID specified. Okay, and it says it gives you a bunch of other information as well. If a string is specified, you must give the exact name of the role, including caps and spelling. So it's case sensitive, space sensitive, all that kind of stuff. Um, an integer is specified, you must give the exact snowflake ID or of the role, which is the integer value. If the message is invoked in a private message context when the check, then the check will turn false. Okay. Again, that's just some you know basic stuff. So let's go ahead and make sure that the user that's invoking the command has the moderator role. Okay, so even though they might have uh both permissions, right? We want to make sure that they have the moderator role. And right now we don't, we have the bot role, but not the moderator role. So let's just say a uh, moderator. Okay. So this is for the ban user, obviously. So let's go ahead and run this. So let's just say ban sty. Okay. You know, notice how even for me, it's not going to work because I don't have the moderator role. Role moderator is required to run this command. Okay. Now, obviously, of course, I'm pretty sure there's a way where you can, uh, I think you can bypass it actually for administrators. But um, let's see. I don't think, I think, I'm not too sure about that. If you can actually have it set so that I can uh, bypass administrators. I'm pretty sure there should be, but I'm not too sure. Uh, it's probably somewhere in the documentation though. But again, let's go back to the uh, the main points, okay? So let's just give ourselves the moderator role. Okay, let's just do ban sty again. Ban sty, okay? And if I go on my other account, you're going to see ban sty. It's not going to work because we're missing the uh, administrator permission. Okay, not only that, but we're also missing the moderator role as well. So even if I give this guy the admin role, okay, and if I try to invoke the command again, it's not going to work because we're missing that moderator role, okay? So I guess it's an extra layer of security, which is, I guess, pretty good, pretty useful. There you go. Now we have the moderator role. We can invoke that command. And of course, like I said, there's a bunch of other... Um, permissions or i'm sorry not permissions a bunch of other checks as well that you can um check so you can see a check that is added that checks if the member invoked command has any of the roles specified this means that if they have one out of the three roles specified then this check will return true so of course like i said you can check to see if they have any of either the library does role moderators role or whatever the id of that is right then it'll work okay, so this is good for checking to either to see if they have the admin role the moderator role or the uh 
uh, whatever bot role. So we can do, let's say, has any role, administrator, uh, what else, moderator, and um, let's just say bots. So if they have any of those three roles, then they can ban the user. But they also have to make sure they have the administrator permission set to true. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of these for now. Uh, actually, let me just go ahead and get rid of... Actually, yeah, we'll get rid of this permission thing for now. We'll just check to see if they have any of these three roles. Because obviously, if you have these roles, you want to make sure that those permissions are set correctly on the server. So if they have any of these three roles, then they can invoke that command. So right now, I'm going to get rid of all of my roles. So let's just do ban sty. Okay, and that's not going to work because I don't have... Uh, where is it? I don't have any of these roles. But if I give myself even just a bot role, okay going to work okay i have one of the roles so it's going to work for me okay so that's pretty straightforward um and we can also do a bunch of other checks like i said there's also bot has role so similar to has role except it checks if the bot itself has a role so this ensures that the bot actually has the dedicated role to invoke the command so um otherwise the bot. well i think a good example would be if a bot doesn't have a specific role then it should not be able to do stuff like kicking or banning stuff like that um, bot has permissions. Likewise, this check is similar to has permissions, but it checks to see if the bot has that permission. Okay. Um, and there's also a cooldown. Wow. There's also a cooldown to check to see if the command is on cooldown, but this is all part of the bucket system, which is, I guess, a little bit more advanced, but we're not going to get into it in this video. Um, we can also do a bunch of others like, you know, guild only a check that indicates this command must only be used in a guild context only basically no private messages are allowed when using this command. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Like I said, go ahead and check the documentation and read through it, play around with it, get used to it, and it'll make a lot of sense. Because like I said, everything over here is well documented and you can always join the Discord Pi server. Uh, there's always people willing to help you out. Okay, but you obviously also need to make sure that you have uh, a basic understanding of Python first, because if you don't know how to code in Python, it's gonna be really hard to help someone out that doesn't really know what they're, you know, doing if that makes sense you kind of need to have at least some kind of foundation first okay of course there's a bunch of resources out there to learn python so um i highly recommend looking into it just google some you know google you know how to code in python and it'll give you there's like a billion different results out there okay so uh, i guess that's it for this video um and i'll see you guys in my next video peace